Whoa, I've been swimming in tech news all morning, and I would say, come on in, the water's fine, but it's not. Here, let me dry off. While Chinese AI company DeepSeek didn't fully burst the AI bubble, it did send Nvidia stock into a tailspin this week as investors questioned the need for Nvidia GPUs when DeepSeek's models are just so dang efficient. But maybe part of the reason they're so efficient is because DeepSeek didn't spend any time developing jailbreak defenses. AI security researchers from the University of Pennsylvania and Cisco found that DeepSeek's reasoning model, R1, completely failed to protect itself against a barrage of 50 popular chatbot jailbreak techniques, which I'll admit, Sounds very disorienting. DeepSeek also apparently didn't devote any time to protecting their internal database of user chat histories and API keys, which was found by security researchers from Wiz just sitting there without even a password to protect it. Between that and the whole sending data to China thing, multiple countries are banning, restricting, or investigating the use of DeepSeek models, including Italy, Taiwan, South Korea, France, and even Belgium, who's usually pretty chill. But DeepSeek hype remains high and OpenAI had to do something. So they launched their O3 Mini reasoning model, which surpasses O1, particularly in science, math, and coding performance, and also doesn't immediately tell you how to make cocaine and explosives when you ask nicely. Or worse, explosive cocaine. <laughs> Limited use of O3 Mini is free through ChatGPT, but paid users can use it more, with $200 ChatGPT Pro subscribers getting unlimited use. Meanwhile, Microsoft now offers OpenAI's O1 model through the Think Deeper feature in its Copilot Assistant for free. And despite saying it's investigating whether DeepSeek improperly used OpenAI models to train their own, Microsoft is also hosting DeepSeek R1 on its cloud services. But you know what they say, keep your friends close and your enemies safely contained in a server farm. Nvidia wasn't kidding when it warned about stock shortages for the RTX 50 series cards. When they launched yesterday, inventory for the RTX 5090 and 5080 sold out in minutes at retailers across the US, the UK, and probably elsewhere. Sorry, I didn't check every country. In some European countries, it almost seemed like stock was never there in the first place, thanks to the leak of a distributor order link. And if you're thinking, wow, people are more passionate about top tier PC gaming than ever. Oh, my sweet summer child. This was reportedly due to incredibly low stock numbers and determined scalpers, with RTX 5090s being listed for as high as 9,000 USD on eBay. YouTuber Jay-Z Fitty Cent tweeted yesterday that he spotted a 5090 he had just signed at a Micro Center launch event that morning being listed on Facebook Marketplace for $5,800. Now all that, despite the RTX 5080 representing objectively bad value compared to previous 80 series cards as laid out so clearly in this glorious graph made by Paul's hardware for his recent video. Paul? really knocked it out of the park with this graph. It's a good graph, Paul. <laughs> But hey, it's not all bad news. Nvidia also surprise dropped a new feature in its GPU driver called Smooth Motion, a spatial frame interpolation feature which can bring less powerful frame generation to almost any game, kind of like AMD's fluid motion frames. Which would be cool if Nvidia didn't say that for now. It's exclusive to the RTX 50 series, which is, you know, if you didn't catch it earlier, so out of stock, stores are sending people home with paper vouchers just to feel like they got something. You ask me, instead, they should pick up something from our sponsor. Oh snap, the company that knows phone accessories usually suck, so they designed one that doesn't. The snap grip is crazy thin at two and a half millimeters. That's smaller than almost any camera bump, so it won't get caught on your pockets. Hold it with two fingers, or just one, I won't judge. It's also a variable kickstand, and it's magnetic, so you can just use it with MagSafe accessories, or just stick your phone to the front of your fridge because you can? <laughs> Come on. And they're running a Valentine's Day promo right now. Buy one for yourself, get 50% off one for your partner at osnap.com slash techlinked or by using the link in the description. I mean, it's the least you can do. I dried myself off, but I still feel like a, a sticky residue. Oh, it's because there's still the quick bits. Intel released their company financial results yesterday and you can find the link in our news sources below, but I wouldn't 
unless you just kind of want to feel sad. Team Blue says Panther Lake laptop CPUs are coming later in 2025, but Nova Lake, the successor to the truly depressing Arrow Lake desktop chips, aren't expected until 2026. Intel also announced that rather than competing with Nvidia's AI accelerators, they're canceling their Falcon Shores AI GPU for now, giving off some real Eeyore energy. It probably wouldn't have been any good. But hey, it's not like Intel is done yet. Microsoft just announced their existing Surface Pro and Surface Laptop for businesses can be configured with Intel Lunar Lake processors instead of Qualcomm Snapdragon X chips. They'll just cost around $400 extra for the privilege of feeling like you've been Thanos snapped, but you're disintegrating extra slowly. Apple has filed a motion to delay proceedings in Google's antitrust trial after a judge denied the company's request to intervene in the case. It's a heartwarming story of massive tech giants sticking up for each other because one wants to continue getting paid $20 billion a year to have Google be the default search engine in Safari. <laughs> wow. I mean, without that money, Apple might have to cancel more projects like the Mac connected AR glasses, which are no longer in development according to master of Apple secrets, Neil Gurmstrong, by which I mean Mark Gurman. Don't worry, Meta's Mark Zuckerberg told investors he plans on selling billions of AR glasses. So there'll be lots to go around. We'll just have little pairs we just slap on babies right out of the womb. And you know what? Let's have some positive stories to round off this episode. After launching Spider-Man 2 on Steam this week, Sony announced the game won't require players to sign in with a PlayStation Network account, and neither will God of War Ragnarok, The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered, and Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered. Okay. Also, the Video Game History Foundation opened digital access to more than 30,000 files in its archive of game materials. And there's no playable games, but there's some cool art. And if you're looking for a quick way to get a real search result instead of Google's AI overviews, just make your search sound more angry with some curse words. It'll skip right to the good Ha <laughs> f yeah. And you better be here on Monday for more tech news, or so help me, I'll have some choice words for you. Like, I miss you. Please, reconsider your decision. <laughs>